our first video for this week is Where to Play. Remember that Where to Play is Lapin Martin's second point after winning aspiration. And so what are our choices here when we talk about where to play? First, it's, it's the geographies. Are you going to be local? Are you going to be state? Are you going to be regional? Are you going to be national or are you going to be international? What are the product categories that we have? And so those categories based upon satisfying the specific types of needs, are they luxury, sports, low price, is it color, uh, target customers, who are our target customers, what are those demographics? Are they children? Are they young adults? Are they adults? Are they seniors? Where do those customers live, for example? Do they live next door? Do they live um, uh, across the river? Do they live uh, downstate? Do they live in a different state? So again, geographies and customers work very closely together. What are our distribution channels? How do we intend to to move our product from our manufacturing facility. It's, if it's a product, a physical product, or if it's uh, a service, how do we intend to get that product or that service out to the customer? What is the sales channel? Is it an online store? Is it a specialty store? Is it a general store? Is it a brick and mortar? Is it where are we going to physically make that transaction? How is that sales transaction going to take place? And then finally, what are our stages of production? So vertical integration, is it backwards vertical integration? Is it forwards vertical integration? So we will talk about integration, vertical integration in, uh, in another video, but our second topic Per Laughley and Martin, where to play choices, we've got to determine which of these, what is the combination that we want to use here. Next, when we decide where to play, there are certain pitfalls that we need to avoid. What are those pitfalls? The first one is refusing to choose. And what does that do for us? It causes a lack of focus. Remember we said earlier that a lack of focus is a killer, not only to an individual, but especially to a business because you're pushed willy nilly by the wind. So having that lack of focus there is something that, that that prevents you from, from getting ahead. The next thing is trying to capture all segments. Remember, you cannot be all things to all people. Your product or your service cannot be all things to all people. If it is, that is a very diluted product. Remember, we need to have a product niche. We need to have to, to specialize. We need to have that, that particular customer in mind, not all customers across the, the gamut, because we will not be able to capture all products. Next, we should understand that trying to buy our way out of an unattractive position via what? Via an acquisition. So acquiring another company is not a good choice. Why is that? Because the strategy required to compete in the acquired firm might be very different from your particular strategy. The assets of the acquired firm might cost more than they're actually worth. The management team, the management system, uh, <coughs> pardon me, of that acquired firm might be very different from your particular management system, your particular management team, and therefore not transferable. The culture of the acquired firm may be very different from yours. You might be a very entrepreneurial risk-taking firm and that firm be a very staid, very slow moving firm where you have a culture clash. You might have a, a, a business model where you are a cost leader, where the acquired firm is a differentiator or vice versa. Also, understand that 
accepting the current position as unchangeable is just as great a pitfall. What should we always do? We should always keep the needs of our customers in mind to try and continuously deliver greater value to the customer, value today and value in the future for our customer. Our next step when determining where to play is actually segmentation. It's how do we view the industry as a separate market and why do we do that? We do that because it's easier to analyze a market than it is to analyze an industry. So what do we do? We disaggregate the industries into segments and we analyze each segment as a separate market. And why do we do that? We are looking for those key success factors for what those particular market niches. That is what we're looking for because we are looking for a particular set of customers. We're not looking to serve all of the customers. So when we analyze, we also think of Porter's five forces. Who are the competitors? Who are, are our rivals? Who are the buyers of our products? Who are the sellers of raw material to us? We think of the distribution chain, the value chain, the sales locations as well. What is it that we're trying to do? We're trying to identify using Porter's Five Forces. We're trying to identify the attractive markets so that we can determine which are the markets that we want to serve so that we can select that appropriate strategy to do what? To maximize the profit. So don't forget, strategy is about what? It is about maximizing the profit. It is not about maximizing the sale. It is not about maximizing the, 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 the market share. It is about maximizing your profit. So again, we think of Porter and we use Porter's five forces to analyze the industry. And there are three questions that Porter has from his test of robust strategy, what are those three questions? Is first, will our product have a unique value proposition? Will our product have a tailored value chain? Will we as well have significant trade-offs? So we want a product that is not easily copied. Think of Groupons, for example. Groupons were great at first, and then everyone and his brother copied Groupons, and, and they had zero attractiveness after, after, or zero competitive advantage, shall we say, after that. Our next step is to actually create a segmentation or a market analysis. And so our first step in that market analysis is what? It's to identify the key market variables. So what are some of those examples of price point, physical size, which we, we look at which differentiator is most significant, and then we try to group those differentiators. But before we can do that, what do we have to do? We have to understand who our customer is so that we, when we do analyze our market, we can determine what is the most important variable for our customer. What specifically do they want? What do they want um, to what, which features do they want? So if we take a watch, for example, so as an example, so that watch, is that watch going to be a luxury watch? Is it going to be a sports watch? Is it going to be a watch for a child? Is it going to be a watch for a hipster? Is it going to be a watch for a senior? Is that watch going to be, uh, have a leather band? Is it going to have a metal band? Is it going to have bright and shiny, glossy metal material, or is it going to be more matte? It, what is, how many jewels is it going to have? What is the uh, cover going to look like? Is it going to be um, uh, a quartz watch? How, what are the requirements of our customer, of our niche customer? Once we determine who our niche customer is, then we can determine what are those market variables for our product that are best going to meet our customer's needs. The second one is to construct a segmentation or a market matrix. So what do we need to do? We need to group our answers 
for our market variables, for our matrix, we need to group those answers into a graph that's easily viewed, easily understood, highlighting the most important features of the segment. And then when we analyze that market for profitability, what is it that we're doing as well? We are looking for what are the substitutes? What are the barriers to entry? So we can use Porter's Five Forces to understand what that market segment is and understand where the power is. Is it the bargaining power of the, of the buyer, the bargaining power of the supplier? As well, what are the substitutes? So when we take a watch, for example, it, a substitute may be what? A substitute may be this. It may be our phone, for example. We don't necessarily need something that is on our wrist. Or is that watch a stopwatch? Is that watch a pocket watch? So looking at our, um, analyzing our market, looking at our substitutes, looking at our barriers to market. As well, what do we want to do? We want to look at our, our key success factors for our market. So we analyze what? We analyze what our buyer's purchase criteria are. What is it that is required to earn that sale? What can we do? How can we meet and exceed our customer's needs with our particular product? How are we going to differentiate our product to actually um, sell that product to the to the client. So there, what are some of the things that are interests uh, that our customers want? Again, is it luxury? Is it low cost? Is it a very small watch? Is it a very large watch as far as the face of the watch? What's the texture? What's the feel there? Is how quickly do we get it done? What is this, what what does the packaging? look like how, how is it sold when we when someone comes in to look at that watch do they bring it out they go into the store does someone there in the store dress up in a tie do they bring it out uh and and place it on that black velvet uh rectangle and then very gently place it in front of the customer also we need to do what we need to analyze the market competition? Who is our competition? How is our competition differentiated? How does it stack up against our product for our particular price? And then finally, look at the segment scope. Are we competing in a single market? Are we competing in various markets? How are we going to advertise? Where are we going to advertise? How are we going to reach our target customer? How are our how is our product going to be differentiated to reach our target market? And which are those particular markets? What are they looking for? So these where to play choices are much more involved than just, okay, we're going to be a regional player or we're going to be a national player. There's a lot more um, involved with it. And so these are parts of it, that segmentation analysis.